Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you guys are well. In today's video, I would like to give you a quick review of the EB55 a lithium powered battery bank I have been using for the past few months. But before we start, let's quickly run the intro. So this will not be a super in-depth review. There are plenty of half an hour reviews out there on YouTube. I just give you a short review, what I think about the unit, what my tests came back with and whether I will continue using this unit. Let's start with a quick overview of the major specs of the unit. I have tested two other Bluetti units, the Max Oak K2 and also the Bluetti EB155, which is a little bit bigger unit. I'm still using that units and there are good units, however, they had their limitation in regards to features. So the Bluetti EB55 is a big step forward and so far is the best Bluetti unit I have tested. So let's have a look at the input ports you have. On top here you have a 15 watt wireless charging pad which is great because my new iPhone 13 for example or also my wife's and some of the kids iPhones can be charged wirelessly so I just place the phone on top here and it will charge. There's one issue I found though. The phone needs to be placed very specifically and it sometimes takes three or four move arounds until it actually starts charging. One thing missing greatly on the other two Blue Eddy units I reviewed is the fast charging port. Here now finally you have a 100 watt uh, PDA fast charging port which is USB-C. So that means no issues charging my MacBook Pro or any device which can be charged fast. And then here we have 4 times USB-A with 5 volt and 3 amp. We have two 220 volt outlets here with a 700 watt continuous output. I tested that and a 1400 watt uh, peak output. However, I never could get the unit up to 1400 watt peak. My unit cut out at 843 watt and showed then overloaded. I would think it shows a peak wattage when cutting out. So for me, that was only 843 watt. We also have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug, which comes in quite handy. The unit is running my mini Bushwin fridge in the garage on and off for some time now. We also have two barrel plugs here, which are 12 volt and 10 amp. I don't really have anything with these barrel plugs, but it may be useful for someone. The Bluetti has two charging ports and you can use both charging ports simultaneously. So for example, you could charge via solar and then via the barrel connector, for example, from your car. This was one big drawback for me with the other Blue Eddy units and one of the reasons why I only use them at home because you couldn't recharge them on the go. So the EB55 comes with a 12 volt car charger, it comes with a solar charger cable and obviously it comes with a 220 volt charger. As with the EB150, the charging brick of this unit has a permanent running fan, which is not temperature controlled. Once you plug it in, it's running and it is fairly loud. So let me give you an example here. Just keep that in mind if you intend to charge a unit, for example, in your bedroom or you want to have it permanently running because it does allow charge through. So you could run it, for example, as a UPS device to, to run your computer or stuff in the office. However, the constantly running fan is quite annoying. You can purchase at Amazon a 120 watt power brick for the unit, not from Blue Eddy, just a third party thing with a cigarette lighter plug. And that is fanless, so no noise. However, it will only charge with 120 watt. 
the Blue Eddy power brick charges with 200 watt. That means in three and a half hours you have the unit completely recharged at home. The car charger only charges with around 100 watts, so that means it will take around seven hours. As I mentioned, also included is a solar charging adapter. I cut that actually off and put an Anderson plug on again because all my solar panels have an Anderson plug. I used a 300 watt atom power solar panel and never managed to get more than 170 watt in. So 130 watt is coming in here now via the 300 watt panel. Yeah, that's now 170 watt. However, that means, you know, in roughly four hours, you would have the battery bank charged back on solar. The unit has 537 watt hours. However, usable is only 478. I did a discharge test and the unit I have here is pretty much up to specs. The EB55 comes with a two year warranty. However, I don't think Blue Eddy really has an outlet here in Australia. So I'm not sure how that actually goes with warranty claims. However, I haven't really come across anything bad online or in the various forums I consult. One big difference of the Blue Eddy unit to the most other units I actually have here is that it uses Live PO4. The most other battery banks use higher density lithium chemistries. However, they usually have a much lower cycle life. So the majority of units have probably between three and maximum 800 uh, cycles at 80% before the battery capacity drops 20%. However, this means the Blue Eddy unit has 2,500 cycles down to 80%. So that is very good. And if the electronics can keep up, really that unit should last me forever. If you're gonna use the unit, you know, once or twice a month, it doesn't really matter. I reckon also the other units will uh, last you for many, many years. However, this unit has charged through, as I mentioned. So if you wanted to use it as a UPS device, for example, or use it frequently, I reckon this Live PO4 unit is definitely the way to go. It is a little bit heavier, it is a little bit bulkier because Live PO4 has not such a high energy density, but I reckon it's perfect if you want the longest lifespan out of your unit. One thing I have to say in regards to the review cycle of these battery banks. Usually I like to test products for quite a while before actually doing my review. However, with battery banks, it just wouldn't make sense because usually every 12 to 18 months, they are superseded and a new model is out and it's no point reviewing something which is not available anymore. So my reviews for the battery banks are after a few months of testing. However, the ones which I continue using and the EB55 is definitely one of them. If they should fail in a year, two or three, I will definitely do a short update and let you know. The Blue Eddy unit also has a little light in the back, which comes in quite handy if you use it camping and so on. For example, I use that unit often on the table when I have the camper trailer around, just to be a bit more mobile. And this light at night comes in quite handy. The only thing I found, it needs a few clicks to get it on. It has three functions, steady, then a bit brighter, uh, that's a bit brighter, again needed two pushes, and then it has a blinking feature, SOS or whatever that is. It is actually, it's SOS, so don't have that on for fun. And uh, then you switch it back off. Again, this button here, yeah, is not as responsive as I like it to be, because I pushed it once, doesn't come on, push it again, now it's on. So what do I like? One difference here, for example, to the EB150 is that now all controls beside the light are at the front. With the EB150, you needed front and back access, which made storing, for example, in the car a bit more cumbersome. I definitely like that it is Live PO4 and that is quite unique at this stage. I think more units will switch to Live PO4 because they just last much, much longer. I definitely like that I now can charge it easily on the move. It comes with an included 12 volt car charger. 
The 100 watt PDA fast charging via USB-C is great. The unit comes with two years warranty. It has a built-in solar MPPT and 12 volt car charger. So no need to carry an MPPT controller with you or have an extra 12 volt car charging unit. You only need the cable. So overall, I think the unit is excellent value for money and is definitely a unit I keep continue using. What don't I like? To be honest, overall, that is probably the best battery bank I have tested so far. The only improvements I really see is that charging pad could be a bit more responsive and not so picky for exactly the right position. The light switch in the rear that I have to sometimes uh, push that twice, yeah, I'm not such a fan of. I would wish that the 220 volt, 200 watt power brick does not have a such loud fan or maybe is really temperature controlled and does not run permanently. One thing which annoyed me a little bit, but that's more for testing, is that the display has no separate switch. To actually show the display, you have to press one of the switches and that will show you the display. The display is bright and good readable, but functionality wise it is a bit limited. It only shows you the battery status in 20% increments and then also shows you the in and output in watts. It would be good to see the battery status in 1% increments. It also would be nice to see the time to live. For example, if you have something plugged in that it gives you an estimate how long the battery will run with that input. You only see input and output in watt and the battery status in 20% increments. I did run once into an issue when overloading the unit, however I could not reproduce it afterwards. So let me quickly show you what happened. Yeah, interestingly, the battery was 80% full. I plugged the hairdryer in and that drained it to zero. Very odd. I plugged the unit into a charger and charged it for an hour and yeah everything went back to normal. I did further discharge overload tests afterwards and it did not happen again. So it looks like the electronics were a bit confused and a reset sorted itself out. So what's my final conclusion? To be honest I think it's an excellent unit for the price and as an overall package price and feature wise it is probably the best unit I have looked at so far. I have to admit, I probably would not have bought any of the bigger battery banks, simply because I have two 100 amp hour DCS lithiums in the car and a 150 amp hour DCS lithium in the trailer, so I have plenty of juice. But since I have the mobile units, I find myself using them all over the house and shed, as well as around the camper trailer, simply for convenience. So it's definitely something I keep using. I hope you enjoyed the quick review of the Bluetti EB55. Bluetti has given me an affiliate code, so if you consider purchasing the unit, you can use my code in the description and that will give me a small kickback to keep my channel alive. Before I leave, I always have the occasional person commenting that if I have been given the product for free for review purposes, it is a paid review or I do paid reviews. As a matter of fact, I don't do any paid reviews even though I get often requests for it. Usually I just delete them right away, but let me show you one example here, which I received recently and it would have actually fitted quite well because I'm testing and reviewing a few of the portable battery packs at the moment. And these offer I received from EcoFlow, a unit which actually looked all right. EcoFlow contacted me, asked me whether I would like to review one of the units I sent them my review guidelines, which clearly stipulates there are no paid reviews. I will never have a predetermined outcome, but always report it how I find it. However, they then offered me a unit for free and a thousand dollar on top of it for a 90 second positive review. Even though that would have been good money, I declined that because I just will not do positive paid reviews unless I tested the product and I find it positive. This is just one example that I don't do cash for comments and I hope it puts some of these naysayers to rest. Otherwise, please don't forget to share, like and subscribe 
and let me know in the comment section your experience with the unit if you already own it.